All right, all right, shalom, most high Christ bless. Pray everybody's doing well. Today we got a class for you, Christianity 101, the moral standards of God. All right, the moral standards of God. The real Christianity, okay? Because what is the real Christianity? Not the modern crap that they're they, they, they selling, us, selling to us today. Because that crap that they selling is destroying the souls of our people. It hasn't done anything for our people for centuries. Instead, it has worked against God's chosen people. All right? So today we're going to go over the real Christianity. Christianity 101, which are the moral standards of God. Because this modern Christianity have not given uh, the blacks and Hispanics a foundation, which are the uh, tr true people of God. They haven't given them any foundation to stand on. No moral conduct, right? They throw that out the window. Saying you're under grace, that's just an illusion. Let's get to uh, 2 Timothy 2 and verse 16 and 17. 2 Timothy chapter 2, verse 16. Mm -hmm. But shun profane and vain... And Hold on. Vain Wait. Second Timothy, excuse me, Second Timothy 3 and 16. 3 and 16 to Sec 17. Second Timothy chapter 3, verse 16. Mm -hmm. All scripture is given by inspiration of God. Here we, that. Here we go. All scripture is given as inspiration to inspire us. Come on. And is profitable for doctrine, for reproof, uh -huh. for correction. For correction, for correction. Somebody please tell TD Snakes that. Tell Creflo Dollar that all those black pastors that are teaching our people that, listen, it's a feel-good message. You don't need to do nothing. There's no works involved. No, you're teaching, teaching counterproductive of what God's plan. Okay, read. For instruction in righteousness. You see that? In the scriptures, we are supposed to find instructions. Our day-to-day -day instructions is found in the Bible. Okay, and we're going to get that. Go ahead. That the man of God may be perfect. Right. Thoroughly furnished. Thoroughly furnished. Lacking nothing. Come on. Unto all good works. Unto all good works. Unto all good works. Yes, works is involved. What are the works? Give me that in Exodus 18 and 20. What are the works that we can be thoroughly furnished, lacking in nothing, to be perfect as a man and woman of God? Let's see. Exodus chapter 18, verse 20. Uh-huh. And thou shalt teach them ordinances. Teach them ordinances, which is the word of order. Come on, teach and, them order. Come on. And laws. And what? And laws. And laws. Come on. And shall show them the way wherein they must walk. Right. With that that those orders should show us how we should walk. How should how we should navigate in this wicked world. Come on. And the work. And the what? And the work. And the work. A Christian pastor hates that. A Christian woman hates that. A Christian uh, 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 evangelist, they hate that. Work in the laws. You, you're going to constantly see that. Work, laws are, they're interchangeable. What's that word? Interchangeable, right? They're, they're one and the same. Come on. And the work that they must do. They must do. It's not going anywhere. The laws, the works of God, it's a must. Today we're just going to focus on more the morals, okay? The moral aspect of the work. Yes, that's something that we lacked as a community. So we it, we are bound by those laws. We have these categories, five categories of law. All right, you have uh, you have uh, dietary laws, sacrificial law. You have uh, ceremonial laws. You have uh, um, moral laws, and what else? What's the civil, civil, laws. civil laws. There we go. So now, give me Deuteronomy eleven twenty six. You're going to read down to twenty eight. Deuteronomy chapter eleven. Hold on, before I, before I move on. And out of those categories of law that we just mentioned, only one category has been done away with. And that's the sacrificial law through Christ. Okay, he is our lamb. Hey, he's our sacrificial law. Okay, go on. Deuteronomy chapter 11, verse 26. Mm -hmm. Behold, I set before you this day a blessing and a curse. This is Moses speaking to the Israelites out of uh, captivity from the Egyptians. Now Moses has set the laws before the Israelites. Read it again from the top. Behold, I set before you this the word, day. Stop. The word behold means to observe. Observe. All right, write that down. Uh, the word behold, when you see it in the Bible, it means to observe. Go ahead. Behold, I set before you this day mm -hmm. a blessing and a curse. A blessing and a curse. 
Something profitable to you or something detrimental to you? Go ahead. A blessing. If you obey the commandments of the Lord, your God. You see that? A blessing profitable for you if you obey. Obey. Come on. Which I command you this day. Mm -hmm. And a curse if you will not obey the commandments of the Lord, your God. Now, now let's see who, the, who these beautiful, wonderful commandments uh, were given to us. Uh, hold that. We're going to come back to it. Psalms 147 and 19. Let's see who these wonderful commandments was given to, okay? Because I said earlier it was given to the Israelites, right? By the hand of Moses. Let's see. Psalms chapter 147, verse 19. Mm -hmm. He showed his word unto Jacob. Unto Jacob, come on. His statutes and his judgments unto Israel. Unto who? Unto Israel. The Chinese man. Israel. Unto the Baptist church. Israel. Unto the Catholic church. Israel. Israel. Read. He have not dealt so uh -huh. with any nation. No other nation has that blessing. No other nation has the uh, the corrections, uh, uh, the the instructions that were given by the Creator of the Most High. No, that no, no other nations have that benefit. Go on. And as for his judgments, mm -hmm. they have not known them. They have not known them. That's why those of our brothers and sisters that are lost in Christianity, what they do, they teach a doctrine that is lost to them. Remember, it was not given to the other nations. Then, thus, what happened? We were conquered, right? Put in slavery and indoctrinated a false doctrine, a false form of Christianity. God said he gave you laws that are, uh, to give you instructions. The other nation said you don't need to keep those laws. Read it again. Read that last part again. He have not dealt so with any nation. Uh -huh. And as for his judgments, they have not known them. Right. That's why they push. Don't, you don't, no, don't judge me. They push that. That's why most of our people have that mindset in their mind. You can't judge me. God said he gave us judgments. He gave us judgments. The other nations don't have it. That's why when you sound just like them, of course you're not going to take heed to God's commandments. Go ahead. And the cap, how you going to the heathen, they would teach our people that there is no judgments of yeah, God. Yeah, they would think they, they would think that they're being chastised as Christians. Right. And they would never, I would never, I never heard a Christian say, well, damn. Maybe I'm being judged by God. You'll never hear that. <laughs> You'll never hear it. You will never hear that. That thought process is not of them. Who, who thought process they have? They have the thought process of the oppressors. All right? They, that's who they mimic or they parakeet. All right? Back to Deuteronomy 20 uh, to 11. 26. 26. You remember, you're reading down to 28. Deuteronomy chapter 11, verse 26. Mm -hmm. Behold, I set before you this day a blessing and a curse. Mm -hmm. A blessing if you obey the commandments of the Lord your God, uh -huh. which I command you this day. Mm -hmm. And a curse if you will not obey the commandments you of see, the Lord your you God. You see that? A curse, right? What's a curse? Somebody look that up for me real quick. Definition of a curse. And we ask this all the time. Is a curse something, a good thing or a bad thing, right? Right here was laid out perfectly. God said it. You'll get a blessing. And if you read up in the chat, it explains what a blessing is, right? So real quick, can we pull that up? Definition of a curse. Uh, uh, second one. Hold on, let me see. No curse against. Yeah, pull up the Miriam. Let me see. Here we go. No, there ain't that. Here we go. Okay, third third one. There we go. Essential meaning of curse. Number three, a cause of trouble. A cause of trouble. Uh huh. Or bad luck. Okay, we got any synonyms to follow that? Or similar words? Let me see here. Go down. There we go. All right, read that. Okay. I don't know Synonyms. That Anathema. Anathema. Damn. Ban. Ban. Okay. Execration. Execration. I don't know that word either. Imprecation. Uh huh. Maledictation. Maledictation. Oh, maledic malediction. Uh huh. Malison. Winds. No, we can't pull up the other words. Uh, let me see. No. Go back to the Google. Let me see if we, the similar words on Google. If that'll help us out. Let's see. Yeah. Go back, go back. Just press back. Let's 
some of the no evil I no 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 go to invoke curse against offensive words and anger go okay kick the arrow yeah the arrow that's down so all of it could pull up blasphemy cuss no cuss words swearing no go down who do go to the third one I remember seeing the third okay that last one right there here we go click that blasphemy take the name in vain swear like a trooper damn cuss no none of that helps all right close that close that let's exile to that all right read that again verse 28 verse 28 and a curse if you will not obey the commandments of the lord your god mm -hmm. but turn aside out of the way which i command you this day mm -hmm. to go after other gods to go after other gods that is idolatry that is idolatry. So when you celebrate Christmas, that's idolatry. When you celebrate Thanksgiving, that is idolatry. Uh, New Year's Day, that is idolatry. And God said, you will, you will be cursed if you are found committing those acts. That is against the commandments of God, right? So it says a blessing. Now, now go jump up for us to read uh, a blessing, some of the blessings. Go to verse, uh, let me see where we get. Verse, I want. 22 read that 22 deuteronomy 11 chapter 11 verse 22 mm -hmm. for if ye shall diligently uh -huh. keep all these commandments which i command you to do them mm -hmm. to love the lord your god to walk in all his ways and to cleave unto him mm -hmm. then will the lord drive out all these nations from before you this is one of the uh, blessings we're reading when, when we kept the commandments of god he said if we diligently kept it he would do what read that part again then will the Lord drive out all these nations. All the nations. That means every nation that opposed uh, God's nation, which is Israelites, the Israelites, they could not stand before us. The utter fear was put into their hearts where they couldn't even fight us. And if, even if they dis were bold enough to fight us, they were eradicated off the planet. Read. Drive out all these nations from before you. Uh huh. And ye shall possess greater nations. You shall possess greater nations. Come on. And mightier than yourselves. Mm -hmm. Every place whereon the soles of your feet listen, shall tread. Listen good. Read. Shall be yours. Shall be yours. Every every place we our soles of our feet would touch, it would be ours. Right now, we're fighting over corners right now. You're fighting over blocks, killing each other over off of blocks. And you don't own nothing. Whose name is on those blocks? The white man. Your oppressors. Right? That means what? We're living the curses. The opposite of the blessings. Read on. Read on. From the wilderness and Lebanon. Uh -huh. From the river. The river Euphrates. Even unto the othermost sea. Listen. These names that, that was just read. They're not in the minds of the ordinary Negro. The defeated Israelites. These names not not even in your thoughts. We, we had possession of these lands at one time. When we kept the commandments of God diligently, we had those blessings. We possessed those lands. Okay? From there, give me uh, 1 Kings 4. 4, and we're going to read it, verse 29 down to 34. Oh, let me get there first, make sure it's the right scripture. I'll be jacking stuff up, y'all. Hold on. Okay, yeah, that's what I want. 1 Kings chapter 4, verse 29. And God gave Solomon wisdom and understanding, exceeding much. Now stop. Let's get what the wisdom is according to God. What was given to King Solomon? Give that at Psalms 111 and 10. Read that. The importance of the wisdom that was given to Solomon. Psalms chapter 111 verse 10. Mm -hmm. The fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom. Right. So you have to have fear of the Lord. Respect. Come on. A good understanding. Then comes the understanding. Come on. Have all they that do his commandments. You see that? And that's, again, that's what our brothers and sisters that are stuck in the Christian church, they lack. They lack the fear of God. Even when we present them with the fear of God, a basic commandment of the dress code. Listen, they run far away from that. I don't know if you ever seen uh, criminals running away from uh, police, f police officers, right? What do we call uh, police officers chasing after a criminal? We usually call them a... Uh, the law, right? That's the terminology we use. They're running away from the law. And what does uh, criminals usually do when they run it? Those chasings, they usually throw obstacles in the way of the police officer, whoever chasing them, so they won't get caught. 
We experience that all the time verbally when we encounter our brothers and sisters that have the mindset of our oppressors, the Christian, the, uh, the holy fied, uh, covered by the blood of Jesus Christians. We present them with the law of God, plain and simple, where they can't run, but still they find loopholes. To, they'll pull, oh, well, this is 2022. All right? That's another obstacle. Oh, well, um, these dress, these pants were made for women. That's another obstacle. All those are just, uh, what, play on words. But to keep the commandments of God, they have that far from their mind. Read that again. Read that. The fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom. So they have no wisdom. They, because what? They don't have the fear of God. They don't respect the dress code. Something so simple. Cover, cover your damn behind up. Cover your behind up, woman. You're showing your whole twat. You're showing your whole ass. Come on, cover it up. Damn. God gave you a beautiful dress coat. And, and you know what? I remember Cap said this one time. Uh, most of us is that are, are, have poor eating habit, and they're so sloppy. A dress is beneficial for you. That right, dress coat right. is beneficial. It'll right. save your life. Because your body's so sloppy, that dress would save your life. Damn. Damn. That was cold-blooded. Cap Captains, the captains, they'll be on Clubhouse going for hours right. explaining the sisters the wisdom of God, the dress code, the dietary law, the Sabbath. And then, all said and done, they'll understand all of it and be like, hey, okay, sis, so are you going uh, to go home and right. change? Right. Are you going to change the pants into dresses? Oh, I'll think about it. Mm. That's, that's what it's talking not lacking no fear there of God. That's go. what you're talking about, Cap. Yeah, that's absolutely How people right. lack the fear of God. They lack it. All right. Again... <laughs> A lot of y'all sisters have bad, poor bodies, and y'all want to, rather than just cover your body up, guess what you do? You want to go get your body done. You think that'll save you? That won't even save you, because j- just for you stepping outside of the laws of God, he's going to jack up the, the hand of that uh, surgeon, all right? Now you got bubble lips. Your hip shifted to one side. One cheek bigger than the other cheek. Don't you know God is the king of terrors? All right. We'll, we'll go back. Go back to now. Go to uh, First Kings. I want to stay on track. <laughs> Got me all heated. For real, man. <laughs> Turn the clap to something else. First Kings. First Kings, chapter four, verse twenty-nine. Uh huh. And God gave Solomon wisdom gave and him. understanding. Right. Gave him wisdom and understanding. Read. Exceeding much. Exceeding much. We're gonna find out how powerful was the wisdom and understanding of King Solomon. Read. And largeness of heart, mm-hmm. even as the sand that is on the seashore. Read. And Solomon's wisdom excelled the wisdom of all the children of the East all Country. All the tree, all the children of the East Country. Come on. And all the wisdom of Egypt. All the, you know why that's important? Because we always have bump into these uh, uh, Negro peans. We always, that love Egypt. Negro peans that love Egypt. They deeped about the the the, the hydroglyphs, right? When right here we're reading where the Bible tells you, listen, I'm going to give the children of Israel this wisdom that is exceeding beyond all the other nations, even Egypt. You rocking that, uh, what's the, the pieces they be wearing? Uh, the unks, right? You rocking that, but guess what? Right under your nose, you have the wisdom of God that excels that nonsense that you're yeah, rocking. The, the Egyptian, the Egypt, Egyptian, not, no knowledge. There you go. The not, <laughs> hotel brothers. Been in Egypt 700 times. I'm deep. Come on. We had one brother on uh, Clubhouse who said, why are we reading from a book that, um, I forgot what, what crap he was saying. He was trying to excel his knowledge. Yeah. And I remember we made a comment. Brother, pull a script from the hydroglyphs to explain our condition. He was going into uh, the, the uh, Bible was a, a white oppression. That's, that's what he yeah, wanted to do. White right. oppression. But that's another, um, what they call, they have that uh, girlfriend ex-girlfriend hurt syndrome, okay? They got hurt by the Bible, by a Christian or someone who didn't properly understand the scriptures, and they ran to another doctrine. They ran to another snare. And a lot of our people, that happens. They'll run from uh, uh, the Bible because they weren't properly taught by the Bible, and they'll fall into another trap, which is Islam, okay? And you have uh, Egyptology. You got the 5% uh, nonsense as well, right. roster firing, all those are other snares and traps. Once they get hurt uh, by the Bible, because remember, it's orchestrated by our oppressors. They're going to feed you lies, but if you happen to get over the lie of, Christi- uh, of uh, modern Christianity, they got several other traps, seven other uh, religions set up for you to fall into. Okay? But you got to be mindful. The truth is now on the earth. Go ahead, read on. 
First Kings chapter four, verse 31. Come on. For he was wiser than all men. You hear that? Wiser than all men. Read. Then Ethan, the Ezraite, mm -hmm. and Haman, and Calco, Come on. and Darda, the sons of Mahol. Read. And his fame was in all nations round about. His fame was in all nations. All other nations heard about the wisdom and understanding of Solomon, King Solomon. Read. And he spake 3,000 proverbs, Read. and his songs were a 1,005. Come on. And he spake of trees from the cedar tree that is in Lebanon. What is that called? That's called what? Understanding of botany, right? Botany. Understanding of plants. Come on. Even unto the hyssop right. that springeth out of the wall. Mm -hmm. He spake also of beasts. Beasts. That's uh, zoology, right? Zoology. Come on. And of fowls, fowls and of creeping things mm -hmm. and of fishes. Right. Today we we, we glorify the white man on was a national uh, what's the geographics, right? But this understanding of wisdom was given to our our king. It was given to King Solomon, our people, right? Read. And there came of all people to hear the wisdom of Solomon. You see that? All nations came to hear this. This brother's deep. He got the understanding of everything we need. So all nations. They based their understanding from who? Our forefather. Read. From all kings of the earth which have heard see, of his wisdom. You see that? That wasn't just any ordinary folks coming to see Solomon. All right? You had kings of other nations. So you had the Pharaoh coming in. Hey, I got to hear this, brother. All that crap y'all writing on the wall. Listen, I, I, I need to hear this, man. All right, the real wisdom coming out. Right? Read. And him... And Hiram, king of Tyre, sent on, him on. servants. Read verse 34 again. First Kings chapter 4, verse 34. Mm -hmm. And there came of all people to hear the wisdom of Solomon from all kings of the earth, mm -hmm. which had heard of his wisdom. Okay, real quick. Give me the definition for morals. Morals. Definition for morals. Moral, number one, a lesson, especially one concerning what is right or prudent that can be derived from a story, a piece of information, or an experience. No, next one, number two. Is the one. A person's standards. A person's what? A person's standards. A person's standards. Come on. Of behavior. Of, of what? Of behavior. Of behavior. Come on. Or beliefs. Of what? Beliefs. Beliefs. Come concerning on. Concerning what is and is not acceptable for them to do. Do you see that? So that's what morals contains. Remember, as Israelites, we have moral standards. We have moral laws. What are, what are some of the moral laws? Those should be your next questions, right? What are some, give me some examples. We had a brother who finally humbled after arguing, you know, for a couple hours. He kept coming back to the, to the, uh, the room in the clubhouse and he finally started asking the right questions. You got to humble yourself. First, give me uh, Ecclesiastes 5 and 1. I didn't have that in my notes, but pull that scripture real quick. Ecclesiastes 5 and 1. Ecclesiastes chapter 5, verse 1. Keep thy foot when thou goest to the house of God. Mm -hmm. Keep thy foot. Come on. And be more ready to hear. Be more ready to do what? To hear. Uh-huh. Than to give the sacrifice of fools. That's what we need to begin to do. A lot of our brothers and sisters, humble down. Watch your step because you don't know who you're talking to. You have men of understanding who make it their business and their delight to dive into this Bible and dissect it. So watch your footing. Watch what comes out your mouth. Have a spirit of more to humble yourself and to listen. Read. For they consider not. They don't consider. They think their pastors were deep. All right. Because most of their pastors have spent years in cemetery school. Yeah. Cemetery school is a ways of death, a, 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 a school of learning of death. Because it's not profitable. Whatever they're teaching in that theologian school is not profitable for life. It's, it's, it, as a matter of fact, it's beneficial for death. Go ahead. For they consider not that they do evil. They don't consider what comes out of their mouth. I don't need to keep the commandments. They don't know that's evil. Them co-signing uh, 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 homosexuality, that's evil. That's against God. They don't consider that, right? Uh, go back now. I just wanted to pull that. Let's get some um, examples of the moral laws, all right? The moral laws, which are which is our moral standards, right? And it comes from the Most High God. Leviticus 19 and 17, one of my um, go-to scriptures. 
Leviticus 19, verse 17. Leviticus chapter 19, verse 17. Thou shalt not hate thy brother in thy heart. All right. I hope you heard that word. Thou shalt not what? Hate thy brother in thine heart. Uh huh. Thou shalt in any wise rebuke thy neighbor. In any wise shalt thou rebuke thy neighbor. Hate. We know that that word is constantly circulated in our community. It is the 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 uh, the reason for uh, how much would I say? What's the percentage? I would say what ninety percent deaths in our community because of that hate, that vengeful spirit, that hateful spirit. Read and not suffer sin upon him. Mm -hmm. Thou shalt not avenge nor bear any grudge against the children of thy people. The children of thy people is your people, the brothers, sisters that look just like you. It's so crazy now. You have uh, women now who's adopted that hateful behavior where it's nothing for them to go up to another woman and blow her away with a gun. It's nothing. It's a, it's a common thing. That means what? You have no morals. This is a moral law we're reading. And we ask this question all the time when we're out teaching our people. If we was to apply just this one drop of law what we just read, not having hate for one another, not having that vengeful spirit, and correcting our brothers and sisters when we when we doing wrong, right, when they're doing wrong, what a state would our community be? That's the question we always ask. And I just love to see the, the, their face when they pause and be like, you know what? It'll be a, it would be a good state. If we was to apply that one law. And listen, that's just one law. That's a powerful law. Not to have hate for one another. Right? And to correct one another. Hey, call them out. Hey, bro, you can't be selling drugs to your brothers. That's that's murder. You hate your people. Okay? You're killing your people. You got something? No, go ahead. Okay. From there, let's get another one, right? Go to Leviticus 8 and 3. All right? So we just went over the violence. Okay? Kill, hating one another because... When you hate, remember, it, it, it branches out into different avenues. Don't just say, I, I hate you, dude. You know, I don't like you. We beef it. No, it goes more. Because what happens? You end up fighting or possibly what's the extreme? We we, we, we under the jail because we just put to death uh, someone that looks just like you, your brother or your sister. You under the jail now. Or you just waiting for your time to die from the get back. Okay? That's what happens. Or you waiting for the ops. You waiting for the ops to wait for you to get out of jail during demon hours to come kill you. That's what happens. All right? You kill one of my brothers. Listen, I'm coming for you. I'm waiting for you to get out of jail. All right? I'm waiting during what time? The demon hours. That's the terminology. They know what the demon hours are. All right? 11 or 3 in the morning, you're coming out of jail because you, you bounded out during the wrong time. Okay? Now you got the ops who know the same logo. They know that. So they waiting on you. Why? Because this law is not implemented. That's a moral standard. And guess, guess who benefit off that? The nation that hate us, they know it and they allow it. They allow it to happen. Okay? You have some? Okay, let's move on. Uh, Leviticus 18 and 3. Leviticus chapter 18 and verse 3. Uh -huh. After the doings of the land of Egypt, wherein ye dwelt, mm -hmm. shall ye not do. Shall you not do. Don't look, don't do what the other nations are doing. All right, this whole chapter, when you have a chance, you need to read it. This is another uh, uh, moral law that our people struggle with. All right, they are constantly uh, um, destroying themselves based on what we're about to read now. Go ahead. And after the doings of the land of Canaan, uh -huh. whither I bring you, shall you not do. Mm -hmm. Neither shall you walk in their ordinances. Neither shall you walk in their ordinances. You won't do after their manner. All right, we're going to read some uh, immoral sexual behavior. We're about to read. You want to bring something up? Yes, sir. Now, you done brought it back around, so all praise I get to squeeze this in. <laughs> Go ahead. Uh, give me Exodus chapter 3 and verse, I want to read verse 5. Go Touching on where you address the uh, keeping of the foot, right. right? Because a lot of times our people come at us like that and not understanding uh, where we're basically coming from because we understand where that wisdom or that understanding they have comes from. That's basically what you're touching on. Leave those ways, those Egyptian customs that you have learned uh, where they were basically at that time. That's what God was telling Moses. And it still stands for today. Watch this. Exodus chapter 3 verse 5. Uh -huh. And he said, draw not nigh hither. Uh -huh. Put off thy shoes from off thy feet. That's the same thing Cap brought out about keeping thy foot. Why? Because Moses, he was learnt in all the ways of Egypt. There you go. That's, why, that's why God told Good him point. that. Read on. 
put off thy shoes from off thy feet. Uh -huh. For the place whereon thou standest is holy ground. It's separated. Damn. The wisdom God says is in this place is separated from everything that Moses learned in Egypt. That's what that's what Cap was telling. That's what Cap is going over. The same thing God was telling Moses then is the same thing God is telling Israel now. When this wisdom's coming out, all that things, all those things you learned in Babylon, keep thy foot when thou come into the house of the Lord. All praises, Cap. That's right. All praise. That's a very good point. Because remember, Moses what spent what almost forty years in Egypt, right. and he got the, the Lord told him, "Don't bring that all nonsense. Don't come with your your thoughts. He said, get your take your sandals off. Come correct." Humble down, and I'm about to fill you with this wisdom and understanding. And sure enough, he did have that wisdom and understanding to save his people. Uh, okay, what were we? Leviticus 18. Uh, start at, no, I want to jump around a little bit. Matter of fact, we have read four. Yeah, read four. Leviticus chapter 18, verse 4. Uh huh. Ye shall do my judgments. Do my what? Do my judgments. This is the most high God telling, the, telling us. We must do his judgments. That means we must make proper judgment calls, right? That means in your moral conduct, you have to make good judgment calls. So can we judge? Yes, we can judge. All right. And what we're using to judge? We're using the moral standards of God. Come on, read. And keep my ordinances. And keep my what? My ordinances. Keep my order. Read. To walk therein. Uh huh. I am the Lord your God. I am the Lord your God. Okay. Uh, let's jump on. Yeah, read verse five. Keep reading. Ye shall therefore keep my statutes uh -huh. and my judgments, mm -hmm. which if a man do, he shall live in them. Mm -hmm. I am the Lord. You, you see that over and over. You hear that again. You shall live in them. There go that word again. Judgments. Judgments. All right. We have to keep uh, drill that into our spirit. Now let's jump to verse t -t -t -t, some of uh, verse eighteen. These are, we're gonna jump into a couple of. When you get a chance, read the whole chapter. These are some sexual immoral laws that the Lord told us not to have uh, within our, 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 our congregation, not to have in our bodies, not to be found uh, in our morality. Read on. Leviticus chapter eighteen, verse eighteen. Uh huh. Neither shall thou take a wife. To her sister, to vex her, uh -huh. to uncover her nakedness, mm -hmm. beside the other, beside in, the other. Come on, in her lifetime. What is that called? That is menage toi. Two women. You shall not take your wife unto another. All right, another to another woman, which is her sister, and lay her down next to her to have sex. All right, that's called menage toi. Toi. That is a immoral act. Once you, if you are found doing that. That is against God's laws. All right? I know a lot of our brothers, they fantasize about that type of stuff. Okay? Or they, they're probably doing that act as we speak. In, in our music, they have that. Drake, right? With his, um, you a lesbian, um, I'm a lesbian too. That's just words of, of breaking this moral conduct law. Read that law again. Yeah, no threesomes. Thank you. No threesomes. There we go. There we go. Read. Neither shall thou take a wife uh -huh. to her sister mm -hmm. to vex her, mm -hmm. to uncover her nakedness. To do what? Be, to uncover her nakedness uh -huh. beside the other in her lifetime. In her lifetime. That should not be found in us. That is a, 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 a more standard of God. We should not be found in that act. We should be even teaching against that act. All right. Teach your children that. You have something? All right. Jump to verse uh, 22 now. No. Give me verse, yeah, 22. Verse 22. Leviticus chapter 18, verse 22. Uh-huh. Thou shalt not lie with mankind mm -hmm. as with womankind. Thou shalt not do what? Thou shalt not lie with mankind uh -huh. as with womankind. What is that called? That's homosexual activity. Sodomy. You should not be found in that immoral act. That's immoral. That's against God's standards. All right? The Christ, our Christian brothers and sisters that co-sign that, all right, that are, are in agreement with it, or probably have uh, um, um, uh, members of family, uh, family members that are caught in that same act. You, you should stand on the moral conduct of God. That should not be allowed in your house. You should be speaking out against that in your, your so-called churches. These churches won't teach it. So do they have the moral, moral standards of God? No. From there, give me verse uh, 19 now. Verse 19. Leviticus chapter 18, verse 19. Mm -hmm. 
Also, thou shalt not approach unto a woman mm -hmm. to uncover her nakedness. Come on. As long as she is put apart for her uncleanness. She is put on apart for her uncleanness. Mean what? She is on her period. She is on her period. Read. Is that it? Yes, sir. Read it again from the top. Verse 19. Also, thou shalt not approach unto a woman to uncover her nakedness mm -hmm. as long as she is put apart. For her uncleanness. Right. She's put apart from when she has her, her period, you are not to go into. I've seen videos where brothers and sisters uh, have set up, uh, they'll, they'll put the laws of God aside and put towels on the bed and still commit that act. It's disgusting. It's, it's against God, y'all. That's immoral. You are unclean in the sight of God. Okay? Lord have gave you a, a set day. Hey, listen. She is unclean. You should not touch her. Put, leave her alone. All right? Go do something else. Go do my work. I got work for you to do as a man. This is not your opportunity to go into her. No, it doesn't get wetter when she's on her red coat. Okay? Yeah. Oh, oh, man. That's the might of the, uh, <laughs> the Negro. Mm. You got something? Go ahead. Cap, you just, you just gave <laughs> me that. I'll go into my you dark gave... place, man. <laughs> yeah, I'm here. Bring me out. You done gave me that, uh, <laughs> that, uh, that thought done popped into my mind, and I was smacked with just the oh, smell of the, the room. Disgust. <laughs> but you got people that love that stuff, man. Oh. They love that Woo. thing. They say, oh, you ain't never felt wetness before or wop before if you ain't have it on red cold. Come on, the red light special. Damn, there was a, what? TLC, right? They had a song called the red light special. That's what they was talking about, y'all. Damn. That's against God. Wow. That is against God. Go ahead. I'm sorry. No, go ahead, Kevin. No, no. You, you had something? No, no. Okay. Oh, okay, okay. All right, from there. Another moral is sexual code, right? That, well, our people constantly violate. Jump up to verse 16. Jump up to verse 16. Leviticus chapter 18, verse 16. Uh-huh. Thou shalt not uncover the nakedness of thy brother's wife. Your brother's wife. You're not supposed to uncover her nakedness. You're not supposed to scoop her up. Even if you do know she is, uh, have haughty behavior, right? Or she uh, is known around the block and your brother uh, uh, marries her. That is not your opportunity to scoop her up and try. Oh, I told you she was a hoe. I told you. Oh, so you told me and you had to prove it getting balls deep into her though, right? No, that's against God's laws. Read it again. Verse 16. Uh -huh. Thou shalt not uncover the nakedness of thy brother's wife. Come on. It is thy brother's nakedness. That's for your brother. That's your brother's wife. You're not supposed to lust after her. You No. You're not supposed to try to scoop up even if you know she has certain behaviors. All right? That is against God's laws. From there, let's go to uh, ch -ch -ch what I want. What do I want? What do I want here? Give me Exodus 20. Exodus 20. Let me see. Here. Ch -ch -ch -ch. Let me look at it first. Bear with me, y'all. And then get my videos ready. Exodus 20. Give me verse on uh, 14. Exodus chapter 20 verse 14 uh -huh. Thou shalt not commit adultery Thou shalt not do what? Thou shalt not commit adultery Proverbs 6.32 And then play that video with Big Ja Play that video afterwards Proverbs chapter 6 verse 32 well, Let me look at it That's the one I want So committed adultery? Yes Yes that's the one But that's whoso one. committed adultery mm -hmm. With a woman Lacketh understanding. You lacketh understanding. Remember, God gave the, uh, the, uh, uh, the understanding and wisdom to Solomon, to all Israel. All Israel. All the nations, they came, sought out that wisdom. So when we are caught in this immoral act of adultery, you lacketh understanding. You have no understanding. That I means you're a simpleton. Read. He that doeth it destroyeth his own soul. You destroy your own soul. Read. A wound and dishonor shall he get, mm -hmm. and his reproach shall not be wiped away. Shall not be wiped away unless you repent. All right? So play that video for me. Play that video. Hey, Brittany. Hey, Troy. Where's Marcus at? Fuck Marcus. You know, Trina, she's not here. I know where she at. Okay. Troy, you need to sit down. Uh. Well, 
Marcus do now? I just came from the day party. Stop real quick. We know off rip, your wife is not at the house and another woman meets you at the door. She is not supposed to be allowed in the house. She is not supposed to be allowed. That's violation. That's strike one off rip. You setting yourself up for destruction off top. Okay? Read. I mean, uh, go ahead. Play the video. I have to work, but today I got the day off. So I'm asking everybody, where's Marcus at? Where's Marcus at? Nobody knows. Finally, I find him. He's in a DJ booth. But when I go up there, what do I see? Some chick sitting on his lap. Marcus is so reckless. Like and I'm trying to figure out who this bitch is sitting on my man's lap. And I look. Excuse the, uh, the And flowers. it's my best friend. Your best friend? Yes. My best friend. Damn, yo. What? You talking about Trina? Yes. Your girl and my man have been sleeping around behind our backs for the last three months. Uh-huh. Get the fuck out of here. Hold on. I'm going to call her right now. Call her right oh, now. Dude, she ain't going to answer. She's with that nigga right now. I don't believe that. Okay. She went straight to voicemail. Yeah, I know. So what you want to do? What the fuck? Hmm. I think I'm about to put hands on this dude. No. You need to put your hands on him. You need to put your hands on me. Stop. What was that? It's a setup, bro, bro. That was a setup, bro, bro. That was a setup. Okay? Now we know the mind of a person without the moral standards of God will automatically do what? They done with it. It's a wrap. They fueled by anger, okay? And they have the opportunity. Satan is in the building. He got full control. All right? Full control, but only a man of his understanding and that has the, the, the moral standards of God will do the right thing, right? Okay? We'll do the right thing. So, uh, f real quick, we're going to finish playing, and then I got a scripture. Give me that. Finish, finish playing. We're going to see what he did. What? They need to know how it feels to get cheated on just like us. No. Yes. Stop. Play, yes. Stop real quick. I hope you heard what her, what her logic was. She said, they need to feel... Right, they need to feel the same thing that we feel. That that pain. That uh, what's the proper word I'm looking for? When somebody do you wrong, uh, that that hurt, the suffering, right? That betrayal. That's the word, right? You married, and then your wife steps out and is caught in the act, the bad, bad act of adultery. Now, uh, the carnal mind would automatically say, you know what? It's time for some what? Get back. Let me get some vengeance. Right? Go ahead, play it, play it to get cheated on just like us no yes yes boy in LA welcome to do the right thing yeah, yeah. 60 seconds will it be A hit it B beat up Marcus C kick her out D wife her up what do you Pay choose boy? Now. I hope y'all I hope y'all watching I'm gonna phone a friend <laughs> Phone a friend. Phone a friend. Hey man, I know why you're here. Shut the hell up, Marcus. F you. Oh. Uh, hey baby, it, it, it's a long story. Not your baby. Oh, uh, I can explain all of this. I don't want to hear shit. You know? Bruh, come on, man. What, what What's going on, man? You, you, you sleep with Trina, bro? Hey man, it ain't what it looks like. Uh, okay, it is, man. But uh, you, you know she was wearing that mini skirt, man, that red one that you bought. Shut the f*** up, Marcus. Oh. I hope you heard what he hey, said. Man. She was, what? Well, stop real quick. Okay, he said she was wearing that, what, that knee skirt. That mini skirt. That, right, that you bought, that he bought. You was wearing it. That was his his reason about behind uh, uh, taking another man's wife and sleeping with her. Go ahead, play it, play it. I, I ain't shit, man, I know. Um, so, uh, hey, man, if you... I mean, because you're my boy, man. You can go ahead and smash me. Hey, you heard what he said? Oh, you just going to offer me up like that? I mean, it's only right, ain't it? We was going to do it anyways without your blessing. What? What you mean? Right. All right, Troy. What are you going to choose? A, B, 
C or D. I'm a pig. C. He chooses C. Correct. That is the right answer. You are a good man. All right. If you don't know what C was, C was kick her out out of the house, right? Now let's get the scriptures. What does God say? Give me Romans 12 and 7. Because we know that's an act of the adultery. Now, Satan pr- pr- uh, gave him an opportunity. You got these options. What you want to do? Believe it or not, we are presented these options every day of our life. What are your moral standards? What is your moral foundation based on? Give me that. Romans 12 and 7. Romans chapter 12, verse 7. Uh-huh. Or ministry. Let us wait on our ministering. Hold on, hold on, hold on. Let me get there first. Probably gave the wrong scripture. Write it down. Hold on, let me look at it first. Is that one? I want. Hold on. Bear with me, bear with me. Uh, 1 Thessalonians 517. Let's get that first. Uh First Thessalonians, chapter 5. Hold on. That's not it either. Five, no, 515. Yes, 515. First Thessalonians, chapter 5, verse 15. Mm-hmm. See that none render evil for evil uh-huh. unto any man. Unto any man. Render no evil for evil unto any man. I don't care what they did to you. All right? You move out the way of the Lord and let the Lord deal with that. Watch this. Read. But ever follow that which is good. But ever follow that which is what? Good. What is good according to the Bible? We'll come right back. Let's go, let's go Romans. Go to Romans. What is good? Give me what is good. Romans chapter 7 and verse 12. Uh-huh. Wherefore, the law is holy. The law is holy. There go that word again. And this is the New Testament, y'all. New Testament, the law is holy, sacred, set apart. Come on. And the commandment holy. Come on. And just Uh and good. And good. Back real quick. First Thessalonians 5 and 15. Read it again. First First Thessalonians chapter 5 verse 15. Uh Uh-huh. See that none render evil for evil unto any man. See that none render evil for evil unto any man. Meaning evil was done to me. It should not be up to me to give that man back evil. Let it let it be in the hands of the Lord. That's not my duty to render that evil. He done an evil act. I shouldn't return and return. Give him up. Lay the hands. It's, it, it, hey, you, uh, when we read that in Proverbs, that's a different that's a different law. We under that right there. The anger of a, a, a jealous husband. You under a different banner then. Okay, because we we've seen uh, uh, husbands topple and almost destroy another man. For catching uh, right, his wife right. in that very adulterous act. Right. Okay? But the scripture says, render no evil for evil unto any man. You had something? Go ahead. Because Cap, uh, like in the, just that situation alone, you know, brothers will be in the mindset where they're thinking about rendering that evil. There you go. That and, get back. Right. And don't even think about the outcome of the evil they might just implement. There you go. Because if he had slept with that sister, say she got pregnant. There you go. He would have been stuck with that sister for the rest of his life. Absolutely. Damn. Absolutely. Right? So go now. Well, read that one more time and then go to uh, Romans 12. First Thessalonians chapter 5, verse 15. Mm-hmm. See that none render evil for evil mm-hmm. unto any man, mm-hmm. but ever follow that which is good, both among yourselves mm-hmm. and to all men. Unto all men. Uh, now, Romans 12 and 17. Romans 12 and 17. Okay. So he made a good decision, but when we when we see through the lens of the Bible, the moral standards that God set for before us, we have a sure thing. All right, we have the real foundation, the the moral standards of God. Go ahead, read that. Romans chapter twelve, verse seventeen. Uh huh. Recompense to no man evil for evil. Recompense unto no man. Don't pay him back with evil. He gave you evil. Don't pay him back evil. Read. Provide things honest uh-huh. in the sight of all men. The way you conduct yourself is being observed by all men. They want to know, are you going to uh, um, fall back into niggerdom? Are you going to do that? Or are you going to provide things that are honest? Okay, what's that proper terminology when you do that? Somebody gives you evil and you don't do that. You take the higher road. That's the word. You take the higher road. The what? 
you're a bigger person, right? Okay? That's what happens. And you are applauded by the nations by that, by your own people who looks at you day to day. Okay? Because remember, our people by default, uh, that's in the world, void of God's commandments, what they do is when they see uh, certain things like this, they, they make uh, merchandise out of it. Right? right? They, that's the, there you go. You got, uh, what's that um, thing they constantly world wait for? Star. World star. They wait for drama. Instigate. They instigate. They love that stuff. Our people love drama. Yeah. While, while they themselves are in the midst of drama. Right. Okay? Right. They could be in the midst of drama, and they love to listen and uh, uh, record other drama or instigate other drama. Right? Yeah, go ahead. And, Cap, that was going into that, that outcome or that judgment that right. could have came for the brother rendering his evil. Because he might think, like how you were saying, he might think it was uh, vengeance yeah. or payback, oh, yeah. but really it was rendering that evil for that evil, like you said. Can I get a script? Go ahead. Go to Proverbs chapter 9. I want to read verse 13. Proverbs chapter 9, verse 13. Watch what God says about uh, a foolish woman and her, tr her snares. Watch this. Proverbs chapter 9, verse 13. Uh -huh. A foolish woman is clamorous. Loud. She likes to argue. She starts drama, right? Watch this, read. She is simple uh -huh. and knoweth nothing. Read. For she sitteth at the door of her house uh -huh. on a seat Come in on. the high places of the city. Come on. To call passengers. To call who? To call passengers. To get somebody to come along with her. Who go right on their ways. Uh huh. Read. Watch, so, verse, watch verse 16. Whoso is simple, let him turn in hither. See that? Whoso is simple. A simple or a foolish woman would try to entrap a simple or a foolish man. Right. And then you get that outcome what Cap's going into. Now you uh, on what Jerry, Jerry Springer. Jerry Springer. Oh, you get uh, a, a Maury. whole, or Maury, and a yeah. big whole confusion about your best friend, your ex-girlfriend, his girlfriend, and who's the baby mama and who's the father. Right. Right. You want, you want to avoid that type of drama. And the only way you can avoid that type of uh, uh, evil around you is to keep God's commandments in the front lips of your mind. All right, and applying it daily. Don't just hear it, but apply it. Give me that Romans 2 and 13 real quick. Because when you begin to hear the commandments of God, it sounds good. It's sweet. But now, when it's showtime, because uh, believe it, it will be showtime. It will be that opportunity that the Most High will bring around where, okay, you read that law. Now, here we go right in front of you. Let's go. What you going to do now? Right. Do the right thing. Remember, we read that earlier in uh, Deuteronomy 11. Uh, a blessing if you do and observe his commandments, right? Go ahead. Romans chapter 2, verse 13. Mm -hmm. For not the haters of now, the law. Oh, read that again. The what? For not the hearers there we go. of the law there we go. are just <laughs> before God. Let's read that again from the top. Verse 13. Uh -huh. For not the hearers of the law. Not the ones that just fall in love with the message, but who? Are just before God, uh -huh. but the doers of the law but shall the, be justified. You know what's that called? Integrity. That's called integrity. When your, your 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 words and your deeds are the same, that's integrity. That's good moral conduct. That's moral standards of God. When you go ahead and you hear the law and then you apply it, God said, yeah, this person got good integrity. The nations are blown away by that. Give me that in Deuteronomy 4. The nations... Are observing. Remember, they are con the Lord is using the other nations to punish us, now uh, to punish us temporarily until we begin to take hold of His moral conduct, apply them, and then the Lord will begin to step in. Then they'll begin to uh, step in. But in the meantime, we just need to wait our time patiently, apply God's laws, and wait for the Lord to work. Uh, read that for me. Deuteronomy chapter four and verse five. Uh -huh. Behold, I have taught you statutes and judgments. Come on. Even as the Lord my God commanded me mm -hmm. that you should do so in the land whither you go to possess it. Mm -hmm. Keep therefore and do them. And do them. Come on. For this is your wisdom. For this is your wisdom. Come on. And your understanding. Read. In the sight of the nations. In the sight of the nations. Remember, the, the wisdom and understanding of Solomon was heard throughout the what? The nations. They know. They constantly observe it. They're constantly testing us. We're going to show you a video how the other nations are testing our moral conduct, our moral standards. Every day, we'll be tested. Okay? Read it again. Verse no, six. no, no. Start, just keep on, keep on reading. Yes, sir. In the sight of the nations. In the sight of the nations, uh -huh. which shall hear all these statutes mm -hmm. and say, surely mm -hmm. 
This great nation mm -hmm. is a wise and understanding The people. same way the other king, the other nations of kings saw the wisdom of Sodom and sought him out, bought him gifts and presents, all right? He had a renowned name throughout the whole world. So the nation of Israel is supposed to have that same fame, that same uh, uh, um, uh, uh, awe, uh, reverence. There we go. That's the proper word. Same reverence amongst the other nations. When applied, not in your niggerdom. Not you trying to show out. No. Not in your uh, 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 your lascivious acts. No. You're not being reverence on that. Okay? The nations are mocking us when they see us um, in that de decayed state. All right? So from, uh, from there, go to uh, what I want. Deuteronomy 22 and 5. Real quick. I want to bring this out. This is also part of our moral conduct, our moral standards as well. Real quick, I want you to read that real fast. Deuteronomy mm -hmm. chapter 22, verse 5. Uh -huh. We're almost the, done, y'all. The on. woman shall not wear that which pertaineth unto a man. Neither shall a man put on a woman's garment. Uh -huh. For all that do so are abomination. Or what? Abomination. You, you got to understand, this is also, dress code is also a moral standard of God. That shows if you have morals or not. If you have, remember, the nations push what? The other nations, they don't respect God's laws at all. They push dress however you want. They push or uh, push dress uh, cross dressing. They don't respect God's law. That says that says a lot. Now what? You have women wearing pants in the church, right? They wearing pants in the church, right? God, where, right. where it's supposed to be an institute of God, right? A sanctuary or a temple of God. But you're not even respecting the moral conduct of God. It's God clearly said it. It's a what? Abomination. Did he change his thoughts? Right. Malachi 3 and 6, real quick. We got to speed through this. Took up all your, all your time. Malachi chapter 3, verse 6. For I am the Lord. Uh -huh. I change not. God said he, he changed not. Read. Therefore, you sons of Jacob are not consumed. Right. You are not utterly destroyed because you got to understand the Lord loves judgment. When he saw anyone in violation of his judgment, it was utter death, instant death. You think you talk about Thanos snap? They got it from God, the God of Israel. Oh, he sent? He did what now? Put him in the ward. After they put him in the ward, what did they do? He was picking up sticks on the Sabbath. They what happened to him? Instant death. Put him to death. Grab the biggest rocks. I don't want to see his uh, soul on the earth anymore. Yes, that's the God of this Bible. That's how serious he was about his moral standards. All right? Okay, from there, um, go to Isaiah 5 and 20. Isaiah 5 and 20, and then jump to verse 23. These are, th this, this law we're about to read is for those that, you know, co-sign the sin. They co-sign immoral uh, conduct amongst our people, all right? And you shouldn't judge them. Leave them. They're okay. So what? He, he kissed a little boy. That's all right. He could kiss boys in the mouth. She could. That's a little, a little uh, um, gay stuff they doing. That's all right. They gonna grow out of it. You co-sign an evil. Read what's the, what's the judgment. Read that for me. Isaiah chapter five verse twenty. Uh huh. Woe unto them that call evil good. Uh huh. And good evil. Woe destruction unto them. That word woe means destruction unto them that co-sign evil. You allow it. You don't say nothing. You turn the eye from it. God said, woe unto them that do what? Woe unto them that call evil good. That call evil good. That call evil good. It's okay. It's not going to harm anybody. You basically call the laws of command, uh, God's commandments evil. Read on. It's going to say it. And good evil. And good evil. What's good unto God? His commandments. The moral standards that he set before us. Right? Read. That put darkness for light. That put what? Darkness for light. You put the ways of this world, which is gross darkness, above God. Read. And light for darkness. Uh huh. Verse 23. That put bitter for sweet and uh, sweet for bitter. Right. Verse, verse 23. 23. Which justify the wicked. What are you doing when you co sign evil? What? Which justify the wicked. When you co sign that dress code that God said, listen, I told the women to wear a modest apparel, a dress. The men shouldn't be wearing dresses. They should be wearing pants. And you go ahead and say, nah, this, and you take it light. I hate when that happens, when they go ahead and say, God don't care about what I'm wearing, what I put. It's what's in the heart. Wait a minute. That lets us know you don't have the moral standards of God in your heart, in your mind. You don't have it. It don't mean anything. And for you to devalue God's word, woe unto you. Read it again. 
which justify the wicked for reward. You justify the wicked. You justify the wicked. Read. And take away the righteousness uh -huh. of the righteous from him. You see that? All the good that the righteous is doing, you call them what they're doing evil. You try to shame those sisters that try to dress modestly. You try to shame brothers that's wearing their fringes and keeping their beards. You try to show oh, that's too much hair on your face. How about you, you know, you bring it down. You, you, you look like uh, um, Brad Pitt. You're too masculine. Or, or Tom Cruise and uh Yeah, and uh, at the, the gym, they put up signs for tox toxic masculinity. Oh, that's the term. There you go. <laughs> toxic wow. masculinity. Wow. That's exactly what happens. That's, that, that's exactly what happens. But when you do that, you throw all the moral conducts of God away, and you yourself have uh, uh, aligned yourself with Satan now. Now you have said, listen, Satan, I, I am your employee. That's what you've done when you do that. All right? So it says, woe unto them. Uh, from there, now, uh, let me see what I want here. Okay. Ch -ch -ch -ch. Give me First John 1 and 6. First John 1 and 6. First John 1 and 6. We're almost done, y'all. Bear with me. Bear with me. First John chapter 1, verse 6. Uh-huh. If we say that we have fellowship with him mm -hmm. and walk in darkness. And walk in darkness. This is, this is for our Christian brothers, our Christian sisters. Read it again. If we say that we have fellowship with him. You say you are a godly person. You are a, a holy fied Christian, right? 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 Read. And walk in darkness. And walk in darkness. That means you're not keeping God's commandments. You have no morality. Read. We lie. You are a liar. God calls you a liar. Read it again. If we say that we have fellowship with him. You say you have fellowship with God. You know God. And right? walk in darkness. And you still walk in darkness. Come on. We lie. You are a liar. And do not the truth. And you don't do the truth of God. You are not a real Christian. The real Christians have the moral conducts of God. They have the foundation of Christ in them. All right. Let's get that real quick. The foundation of Christ. Because uh, I, I said it over and over. The moral standards, the foundation. What is it? Let's get that in, uh, let me get that. 1 Corinthians 3 and 10. 1 Corinthians, you're going to read down to verse 11. 1 Corinthians chapter 3 and verse 10. Mm -hmm. According to the grace of God, which is given unto me, mm -hmm. as a wise master builder. As a wise master builder, come on. I have laid the foundation. We have laid the foundation. It's going to tell you, read. And another buildeth thereon. Uh -huh. But let every man take heed how he buildeth thereupon. Take heed how you build, read. For other foundation can uh -huh. no man lay mm -hmm. than that is laid, uh -huh. which is Jesus Christ. Christ is our foundation. Christ is our foundation. And was Christ walking around doing his own thing? No. Christ was always following the example that was put laid before him. Get that in John 5 and 30. Christ never did, did his own thing. He's going to say it here with his own mouth. Read that. What would Jesus do, right? Would Jesus go around doing his own thing? No. Let's see. John chapter 5 verse 30. I can of my own self do nothing. Uh-huh. As I hear, I judge. Where do you think Christ was hearing from? He was hearing when he went into the synagogues and he, 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 he was there on a Sabbath day reading out of the book of Isaiah, right? So he was, he was rehearsing the righteous acts that was laid before him. Read. And my judgment is just uh -huh. because I seek not my own will. He don't seek his own will, but what? But the will of the Father which has sent me. All right, Luke uh, 6, 48. And play that last video. Play that video for me after this scripture. Real quick, read that. Luke 6, 48. Luke chapter 6, verse 48. Uh -huh. He is like a man which build an house mm -hmm. and dig deep mm -hmm. and laid the foundation on a rock. Come on. And when the flood arose, the stream beat vehemently upon that house. What's this going over? Those that don't have the foundation of God's commandments. You don't have Christ, the faith of Christ, and the commandments. You don't have a sound foundation. If you are just holding on to the doctrine of grace, 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 all right, which is mercy, a, a, a temporary time to get yourself uh, 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 acquainted with the laws of God, the morality, sta uh, the moral standards of God, so that you don't get uh, destroyed with the judgments of God. Okay, if you're standing on that false doctrine, you don't have a sound foundation. Read. 
laid the foundation on a rock. You laid it on a rock, uh huh. And when the flood arose, the stream beat vehemently upon Come that on. house and could not shake it, uh huh. For it was founded upon a rock. It was founded upon a rock, a strong foundation, which is Christ. Read. But he that heareth and doeth not. And doeth not what? The commandments of God. Read. Is like a man that without a foundation built a house mm -hmm. upon the earth. Mm -hmm. Against which the stream did beat vehemently. Mm -hmm. And immediately it fell. It what? Immediately it fell. Uh -huh. And the ruin of that house was great. It was great. It was put to shame. And that's what happens a lot of times when, our, when we meet our, our fellow Christians who don't keep God's commandments. Guess what? When we ask them, what is the love of God? And they, they uh, 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 agape. It's agape. Uh, it's, high, it's that, 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 that uh, chakra feeling. They can't give you the words of God to explain what the love of God is, right? When, when we, <laughs> and you see it. They are not on a, on a, sound, a solid foundation. They're sinking. The, the more you talk to them, the deeper they dig themselves into a ditch of death, right? Because they have no sound foundation. Read the, uh, play that video. Play that video. Another example of uh, moral standards that the other nations are constantly observing uh, uh, if we have it or not. Okay, play that video. Uh, the cell or the cell phone, or the, the purse. You can play. The, I, I put it in order. The first one I, 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 I shot to you. Go ahead and play that. What up, guys? So today I'm in a grocery store, acting like I work here. When a customer comes in to purchase something, I'm gonna say that I have to go to the back to get some change really quickly. The funny thing is, I'm actually gonna be leaving my phone that has an electric shock on the back of it on the counter. So while I'm in the back, if anybody tries to take my phone, they're gonna be going nuts. If this video gets 10,000 likes and a lot of comments saying I want more grocery store bay pranks, that? then I will definitely They're do more. Also, make sure to subscribe our, and turn on your notifications sin. if you guys have Watch. not already. Let's see what happens. Come on. What's up, man? Come on, bro. Good, man. How are you? Another day. Love you? Yes, sir. Let's go. Let's see, 118. Okay. Actually, I don't have change up on. Let's go get some change up on. Go for it. Boom. All righty. Twenty. Okay. Oh, yeah. Got a little pain in my leg. Pain? Yeah. Show you good? Yeah, I'm all right, man. I'm all right. <laughs> he is getting shot now. Change. He's getting what shot happened? now. He turned it up. Yeah, man, I'm cool. You sure? Yeah, I'm cool, man. You don't look good, dude. Oh, Instead of putting it, pulling it out. Look at that. What happened? Nothing, man. Instead of dropping his cell phone, he's burying it. Yeah, I'm positive. I appreciate it. Okay. What's going on, dude? Look, there you go. There it is. What's going on, bro? There you go. Here you go, another one. Yeah, this is all right here. Uh, He's trying to see if they're going to uh, leave the cell phone or they're going to take it. He pretends he need to go back to get more change. There you go. There you go. Sorry about that. Oh, that's good. That's good. One, two, three, four, five, six. There you go. Turn on the ah! screen. There you go. Yo, you good? Woo! Yeah. You know, it's just, just from time to time my leg just starts tripping, you know. He even lied. It's nothing, it's nothing. Oh I got a little nerve, nerve damage, you know. Dude. Yeah, go go ahead and see that? keep oh coming. They make mock of us, they man. They mocking us. Oh. Look. Uh-huh. Did she show you how catchy? Yeah, 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 yeah. You I'm want me to, like, call it help or anything? Woo! No, no, I'm, I'm good, I'm good, I'm good, I'm good, I'm good, I'm good. I'm good. Uh. Mm -hmm. I don't... Ah! Break this stuff. Oh my God. The taser is still going on. It's still in his pocket. Uh, it's a bait. It's a bait for him. All right. Yeah, no, all right. You can, you can drop that. Give that video. <laughs> now he had to turn it in. Now you see that? The, they constantly were watching us to see if we're gonna make, have if we have any type of form of morality. Okay. Any moral standards? Play the next video, and then we're gonna get the scripture real quick, and then I'm gonna wrap it up. Next video. Beat purse prank. What we did was we got a, a purse, we mechanismed it. So this way, if somebody tried to open it and steal from it, it launches what is ever in it up 
into the person's face. And halfway through this video, we actually put stink spray in it as well, so this way it would, it would not just blast him in the face, but it would also smell. But I'm posting a new video every single Monday, so be sure to subscribe to see more bait pranks just like this, and don't forget to like as well. Come Comment on. below if come you on, would try to take the purse from a stranger. Jump, jump if you enjoy this video, be jump up, jump up, come on. So you got a uh, sodomite, left the purse. It's a bait purse. And you got our people with no more conduct, no more standards, went ahead and just grabbed the purse. Boom. There you go. Yeah. Yeah, there you go. You got him. You son of a so, That's why Make you got mockery of us. <laughs> Real quick, hold that. Give me Jeremiah 7 and 9. Jeremiah 7 and 9. Yeah, that's to make mockery. Jeremiah chapter 7 and verse 9. Will ye steal, murder, and commit adultery, mm -hmm. and swear falsely, mm -hmm. and burn incense unto Baal? Now you see that? All that is lumped up in one. All that is uh, uh, um, or immoral, or immoral conduct. Will you read that again from the top? Will you steal? Will you steal? Murder. Lump, lumped in with the murderer. Come on. And commit adultery. Uh-huh. And swear falsely. Uh-huh. And burn incense unto Baal. And burn, meaning you serving uh, idolatry. You're not of my of my people. Because my people will keep my moral standards. You better off serving another God like the other nations. That's found in the other nations. Okay? Uh, give me now Deuteronomy. No, give me Exodus 15, uh, 20 and 15 first. Exodus uh, 20 and 15. So the other nations, they make mock mockery of us, right? They make fun of us because they know we don't have no more. We, we've been destroyed, all right? God cast us away temporarily, and guess what? They make mockery of us. That's one of the curses. We won't get it. Get that for me real quick. Exodus chapter 20, verse 15. Uh -huh. Thou shalt not steal. Thou shalt not what? Thou shalt not steal. Thou shalt not steal. This is a moral conduct that our people constantly lack. That's the standard of God. That's his law and commandments. Thou shalt not what? Thou shalt not steal. Thou shalt not steal. And Christianity, they didn't have this. I bet he's a Christian too. If he's not, his mother is, okay? But they don't drill the commandments of God. Leviticus 19 and 11. Leviticus chapter 19 and verse 11. Mm -hmm. Ye shall not steal. Ye shall not what? Ye shall not steal. Read. Neither deal falsely. Mm -hmm. Neither lie one to another. Yeah, there's incidents where they would, uh, they'll test our people. They'll steal the phone and come back and politely ask you, did you see my phone drop? I didn't want to play that video because it's so embarrassing. Right? Did you steal it? They would ask over and over. No, I didn't see it. Did you see my phone? No, no, I didn't see it. Okay, no problem. And then they'll bring out the cameras and put them on the spot. All right, replaying the whole video when they scooped it up in slow motion and all. It's so embarrassing. I don't even want to put that up. All right, from there, let's go to uh, 2 Timothy 2 and 19. And we'll wrap it up. 2 Timothy chapter 2 and verse 19. Mm -hmm. Nevertheless, the foundation of God standeth sure. Standeth sure. The foundation of, uh, of Christ is the laws, statutes, and commandments and the faith of Jesus Christ. Come on. Having this seal. Having this what? Having this seal. Uh-huh. The Lord knoweth them that are his. The Lord knows him that are his. Why? Because they're going to be sealed with the laws of God. They'll be showing a pattern of good works. They'll be sh letting their light shine before men. They won't be co-signing uh, evil. They won't be like, oh, okay. Um, he's, he's just a little homeless. It's okay for him to have those... Uh, um, Switching while he walk as a man, a grown man. Oh, it's okay for her to have that butch um, attitude or she's disrespecting her husband and him, he's jumping from woman to woman, disrespecting the, the, the marriage. No, you're not co-signing that, all right? You're not co-signing that. That's, uh, that means you have moral standards, okay? Read. And let everyone that nameth the name of Christ mm -hmm. depart from iniquity. Depart from what? Depart. From iniquity. All right, we'll wrap it up right there. With that, I uh, will say shalom.
Shalom, Israel. This is Bishop Nathaniel. I want you to know that you can view all our Sabbath classes live on IUIC TV. That's right. I said on IUIC TV. Download the app today. Shalom. We used to scream black power while Heron was pushed. But at the end of the day, nothing's in vain. IUIC has been given a vision. The tents of Judah has risen. Many has attempted the mission, minor murmuring, omitting, and missing the mark. Just reading that he had the flame of fire in his eyes gave us the spark. We on Paul's mission. We out on the road, purple and gold, from Mexico, Cuba, Haiti, Ghana, Sierra Leone. 144,000 boots banging, concrete crackling. These are our men repented at heart. The scriptures is proof. IUIC, we deliver the truth.